our last episode, we dug deeper into Cambodia while doing our best to survive its brutal heat and humidity. This time around, we learn more about Kampop Pepper than we ever thought we needed to know and dive into Cambodia's brutal history. Kampop is a cute little town in southern Cambodia that's best known for its high quality table salt production and its world famous peppercorns. And since we like to eat this stuff, we thought we'd go check out how it's made. So we grabbed ourselves a tuk-tuk and we made our way out into the countryside. We're tuk tuk for wheeling. <laughs> After about an hour of bouncing our way through rice fields and potholes, we made it to the La Plantation peppercorn farm. Made it. Nice job, Kristen. Nice. Made it. <laughs> it's a high four and a half. <laughs> All right, we're just outside of a little town called Kampat in Cambodia, and. Here in this region, they grow what is known as the best pepper on the face of the earth. So we're here at a plantation, gonna check it out. It's been in a lot of local dishes we've had and it's phenomenal. Peppercorns, grown locally. Kind of excited about this. The La Plantation Peppercorn Farm bills itself as an agritourism destination. And it's a place where they not only grow what is considered to be the best pepper on the face of the earth, but they'll also take you around and show you the inner workings of the farm. But even better is the fact that they've got some pretty tasty samples in the visitor center. Even better than the peppered banana chips are the peppered flavors of ice cream. What kind is yours, Dad? We have chocolate pepper. Yeah, that looks good. Mm -hmm. What's with the tiny spoon? <laughs> How is it? It's very good. Is it? It's really good. Oh yeah. Chocolate. Lime pepper. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, that's good. Is it? Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. And after some pretty tasty treats, we are off into the fields to see how this stuff is grown. Kampot pepper is a little bit sweeter, a little bit spicier, and has a flavor that lingers just a little bit longer than your average peppercorn. And it achieves those traits thanks to a perfect growing climate, a perfected organic growing technique, and the very perfect location at the base of the surrounding mountains, which put just the right amount of quartz into the soil to bring out those extra flavors. In Kampot, you know, in Kampot, it's very easy to grow the, the crop. It's very fresh, yeah. It's like... That's awesome. Everybody should smell fresh lemongrass in their life. After learning all we ever needed to know about pepper, as well as some of the other crops grown at the plantation, we hitched a ride with these guys to see some of the surrounding area. And what was surprising was just how slow how uncomfortable and just how smelly a ride behind a couple of water buffalo could be. It's a boot break. And because of the road conditions, one of our team decided she was better off out here. <laughs> so much happier. We went for a water buffalo ride and Kristen went for a water buffalo walk. <laughs> so now if we if we all die, you gotta save us. 
Thank water you. to water bottle. Something like that. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's like... Because of that slow, uncomfortable ride, we got plenty of time to take in some pretty amazing scenery. And once the weather rolled in, and we came up to the nearby lake, it was pretty easy to see why these smelly beasts are called water buffalo. They absolutely love the water. It's raining. They love the water so much, they decided to just plop right down and take a bit of a break. <laughs> the whole experience at the La Plantation Peppercorn Farm, as well as the slow ride with some smelly water buffalo, was surprisingly more fun, exciting, and informative than I thought it would be. And we even picked up a few of the local hitchhikers. That was fun! And after that slow, wet ride, we went from one trusty steed to the next and bounced our way all the way back to Kampot. Did it. That was exciting. We made it! <laughs> That was a fun day. Alive. Thank you very much. After roughly a month roaming around Southeast Asia with Thad and Kristen, it was time. Thad, you're out of here. Yep. Okay, that's it. Jason and Jen just left us, and now these guys are leaving us on our own. It's just me and Brenda now. <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> Are you so excited? Be safe. Stay healthy out there. Stay healthy, please. Have a good trip. See you guys. See you guys. With Thad and Kristen gone, and us on our own. We'd spend the next couple of days waiting out just a little bit of weather. And after that, it would take us about 48 hours to make our way back to the States on a series of tuk-tuks, buses, and planes. Well, we're officially back in the States, and pretty soon we'll be heading back to our boat in southern Mexico to continue our big sailing adventure. But um, until then, I think we should talk about the four months we just spent in Southeast Asia, because it was great. One of my favorite things about traveling are the surprises you get along the way. And Southeast Asia is full of surprises. It's got history and culture, adventure, incredible food. It's really the type of place we look for when we're traveling. It's got it all. And coming from the States, it's really a completely different way of life, which makes it new and exciting, and new and exciting for us equals fun. So now with that out of the way, let's talk about Cambodia. So while we were in Cambodia, of course, we saw the big tourist attraction of Angkor Wat, which I still think is one of the most incredible places on the face of the earth. If you get a chance, go see it. But we really, while we were there, did our best to get off the beaten track and see more of the country. Um, and what was really surprising to me was really how beautiful and vibrant and warm and friendly the people were to us. Um, but more so how it's able to be that. I don't want to get too deep into the woods here and make this a big, long, boring history lesson, but I do want to cover a few topics because I think to understand where Cambodia is today and how it got here, you got to know a little of the history. We visited a number of museums and memorials all throughout the country, and um, got to admit, the more we visited and the more we learned, the more depressing and difficult the place became. 
I'm gonna to try to keep this brief, so this is all a bit simplified, but, um, but let's just jump right into it. So if we go back to the Vietnam War, a war in which Cambodia was officially neutral, but at the same time, they let the Viet Cong slip in and out of their borders and use the Ho Chi Minh Trail to deliver troops and supplies and um, support their efforts in that war. And because of that, the U.S. started bombing the eastern border as well as the Ho Chi Minh Trail and eventually large portions of the country. Between 1965 and 1973, the U.S. would actually drop more bombs than the entirety of the Allied campaign in all of World War II. But because of all the bombings and the hundreds of thousands of lives that were lost due to the bombings, that led to a vacuum, which led to the Khmer Rouge. Um, you may have heard of Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge, especially since those genocide trials are back in the headlines right now. But if you haven't, do a quick Google search. You'll get more depressing news and history than you ever wanted. What the Khmer Rouge did to the people of Cambodia was beyond brutal. When they took over the country, they started by killing all former government and military. Then they killed doctors, teachers, business leaders, anyone who had a formal education, anyone with eyeglasses. And everyone who was left was forced to work in the fields, growing crops and on infrastructure projects. But a large portion of the crops that were grown, rather than used to feed the population, they were sold to pay for weapons. People starved, families were separated, torture and executions were carried out in mass. All told, roughly two million people were taken by the Khmer Rouge, around a quarter of the country's population gone in four years. The Khmer Rouge was driven out of power when the Vietnamese invaded Cambodia in 1979. For the next 10 years, they were at war with Vietnam. It wasn't until 1999 that the Khmer Rouge was finally dissolved. Again, this is all simplified just a bit, but basically for nearly four decades, the country was in turmoil. So like I said before, we visited a number of museums and memorials all throughout the country. Uh, and a number of these places were, were where some of these atrocities took place. The killing fields, prisons, mass graves. It was pretty depressing and difficult to learn about, especially seeing all this firsthand. But what is really surprising to me, actually amazing really, is how far Cambodia has come since then. And I think that's the story that I really want to share about our time in Cambodia is, but even with all of its struggles, it's an amazingly beautiful place with really beautifully kind people. And uh, more than anything, I think there's a hope for the future. And yes, it can be pretty difficult at times, but if you find yourself in Southeast Asia, Go spend some time in Cambodia. It's totally worth it. It's an amazing place. But that's about it for our Southeast Asian adventure. Thanks again for joining us and coming along with us. I guess we'll see you next time when we're back on our boat in southern Mexico. Thanks again for watching. See ya.